In this video, I'm going to show you how to make and transform guides. Guides are incredibly useful for lining up objects on your artboard. In this case, though, we're going to use them for constructing the position of four summits in the Green Mountain Range based on the azimuths, or angles, measured from a compass on a boat at two different positions on Lake Champlain. This is how early explorers would have estimated the position of and mapped inland features, except that they probably didn't have Adobe Illustrator to help them out with making their maps. Our first step is actually going to be to make a new layer, because guides are going to be objects that will appear in our layers panel. And so I'm going to make a new layer called guides. And then I'm also going to lock the Vermont rivers and the Lake Champlain layers so that we don't mess those up while we're making our guides and moving them around the screen. Second, I'm going to come up to the View menu and go to Rulers and say Show Rulers. And now you'll see that there are rulers that are measured in inches because that's our document unit. And they're measuring off of this corner for the horizontal ruler and this bottom corner for the vertical one. And the rulers are there because in order to make guides, we actually just click and drag out from the rulers and pull out in this case a vertical guide or in this case a horizontal guide and you can see that over here in our guides layer we have these two guides that we've just made one of them is selected and guides can be selected and transformed just the same way that objects are they are actually objects on your page they just don't print so you don't have to worry about them sort of coming out your final product so we have this guide selected. I'm actually just going to drag it down to the trash to get rid of it so that we're only dealing with one guide at a time. And I'll drag it over, whoops, I'll select it, and drag it over onto the screen, and then zoom into this point. So the first angle that we want to measure is the angle between the south point of this island, which is called Providence Island, and our boat is if we imagine it out here, has measured an angle to this island of 359.8 degrees. The way that we're going to uh, rotate this guide so that it expresses that azimuth, or that angle, is by first selecting it and then coming over to this rotate tool. Now if we click the rotate tool and then click somewhere in our artboard to specify where we want the guide to be rotating around, you'll see that this is a sort of a central rotation point. Then we can click and drag and the guide will rotate around that point. But we'd rather not be rotating it freehand because we want to rotate it to a specific degree that's measured. So I'm going to take this guide and put it in the trash and drag out another guide that we know is has a rotation of exactly zero degrees. It's pointing straight up and down. So let's select that one and then double click on the rotate tool and we get this little dialog that pops up asking us what angle we'd like to rotate it at. <clears throat> Something to note is that when you measure angles on a compass, there's zero degrees here and then they rotate in this direction so that this would be positive 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and zero. In the Illustrator, it actually rotates exactly the opposite direction. So this is positive 90, 180, 270, and zero. So in order to get that angle of 359.8, I'm actually going to type negative 359.8. And that way, it'll go all the way around and almost back to zero to give us a mild angle right like that. I'll push OK. And you can see that it's just barely angled. But that's OK. So now that I've got it rotated, I can come and position it such that it's lying right across the southern tip of that island. And I, when, I'm, when I was measuring this, I actually did it to sort of the middle part of that flat section of the island right there. So we'll stick it there. I'm going to come out and get another guide and do the same thing. I'll grab the rotate tool. And now we're looking for our next benchmark is off of Colchester Point, And it's at 74.1 degrees. So I'm going to type negative 74.1. Hit OK. Our guide seems to have been rotated off the screen. Yeah, it's way down there. So I'll come get it. Colchester Point is right there. So I'm going to drag this down so that it intersects Colchester Point. And then we'll come get another guide. And now this is the one that's selected. It's in green, which is the color of our layer. So that's how we can tell it's selected. All the other guides will just be uh, in this light blue color. And then rotate it to negative 144.2 degrees. Again, it's rotated off our display here. 
And this one is going to Shelburne Point, which is this peninsula right there. So we'll just line it up. Now technically, we would only need two azimuths in order to calculate the position of the uh, the position of the boat. But just for safety's sake, we've done three, and you can see that they all coincide on pretty much the same point, which is which is great. So there's the pos the first position of our boat. Now let's do the same thing with the uh, with the next position. So I'll get a guide out there. <clears throat> I'm actually just going to tell it where to rotate to. So I'm going to put a point right there. And now when I double click and type in the angle for my next boat position, which is 351.0, negative 351 in this case, should have rotated around that point. So to benchmark A, which is Providence Island, it's right there. We'll get another one. This one is only 0.8 degrees, nearly vertical. Colchester Point, and then 54.5 degrees to Shelburne Point. You can see that these are just a little bit further off, and so we're probably going to take just the average of those, depending on where I had positioned this on Providence Island, that probably would influence it. But you can see they're roughly coinciding on the same point down there. Okay, so now we know where our two boat positions are. One is right here, and one is right there. Now we are going to try to find the position of our mountains. So we're, me we're measuring for Mount Mansfield, Camel's Hump, Mount Ellen, and Mount Abe. And we're going to do the same thing with guides. And just to keep track of everything, I'm going to make a new layer and call this one Mountain Guides so that we can keep track of this. We'll lock that one and that way we won't be screwing around with the position of any of these guides. So let's get a new guide out here and measure our first angle to Mount Mansfield. So from boat position one, which is right up here, Mount Mansfield is 89.5 degrees and it's negative 89.5 in this polar system. So there's that angle. I'm going to position this right where our boat was and then get another guide out to measure the angle for Mount Mansfield from position 2, which is down here. So from there, it's negative 69.5 degrees. If we put that right on the intersection point, you can see that these two guides are lining up right around there. And so there's the, the position that we've measured for Mount Mansfield. Our next one is Camel's Hump. So that's at 123.7. Whoops. Got the selection tool. Line this up with our first boat position. And from boat position two is 107.1. The negative there. So there we are. So there are our two positions for Camel's Hump. And just to help us stay organized, I'm actually going to make some sub layers. So we'll call this one Camel's Hump. And we'll throw these two guides in there. Make another one for Mansfield and put the two guides for Mansfield in there. So now if we turn off all of the guides for the positions of the boats and turn on all of those guides, it's easier to see if we make Mount Allen a different color than Mansfield. Let's make it orange. You can see that the points for Mansfield is right there, for Camel's Hump there, for Mount Ellen right there, and Mount Abe right there.